an interesting article a couple of days ago. I picked up on, I don't know if anybody else has seen it or not. But it's about Department of Homeland Security is going to release chemical and biological agents into the environment near the Kansas-Oklahoma border. The article goes on to state how they're going to execute a low-level outdoor release. At the old Chilaco Indian School in January, and again in June. That campus is about six miles south of Arkansas City, Kansas. Ron Estes of Kansas has a lot of questions for him. He claims he wants to make sure it's safe and everything. Purpose of this is to gather data that's going to enhance predictive capabilities in the event of a biological agent attack. Specifically, predicting the extent to which an intentional release, an attack, may penetrate you and me in our houses, single family, multifamily structures. These two types of things that are going to be released are titanium dioxide and alternative inert particle 2 is a 90-10 mixture of urea powder with CL fluorescent brightener. Barcoded bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Kerstecki BTK spores will be used for the biological material in these tests. They resemble and act like deadly pathogens, but they're safe, found in nature, and are used in organic gardening. Both would be released and detected by sensors located outside and inside the buildings. Uh, all the materials they claim are considered non-toxic and non-hazardous. Although, personnel conducting the non-toxic, non-hazardous release will be outfitted in personal protective equipment, Tyvek suits, masks, and gloves. And there is another article that I have. This article is from the Kansas printing. It basically says the same thing with a few more comments from the representative Estes. Now this one claims they're going to be in January and February and in June and July, so that would be four where the other article said two. And Estes says he's monitoring the situation closely, you know, got a lot of questions, important to uh, make sure this is safe for the residents of Kansas. In Arkansas City, says it's the first time they've been made aware of any testing. Inert means chemically inactive, which by definition there should be no risk to people. However, they're going to check into that, make sure. And then it goes on down to, I believe it said something. Oh, there it is. BTK, which I mentioned earlier from the other article, is sold under the trade name Dipel. And EPA does not consider that to be a threat, if that's any consolation. And we can believe anything EPA tells us when it is handled appropriately. So, let's go take a look at Dipel. Well, here we are at their website, 
Valent Biosciences, the world leading biological insecticide, Dipel. It has the naturally occurring microorganism, which I mentioned, which we'll call BDK for that long name. It is cost effective, broad spectrum, caterpillar control on more than 200 crops of your fruits, vegetables, nuts, vines, cotton, oil, palm, and corn. The active ingredient. A blend of Bt proteins and a spore. Many other Bt strains lack the volume and balance of Bt toxin proteins that Dipel delivers. Perfect tool for insect pest control programs. Low impact on workers in the environment. Does not harm beneficial insects such as bees insect predators and parasites which control other insects not harmful to humans wildlife or the environment uh, the often used dipel as a rotation partner with zentari another bt product from this valent biosciences And there's quite a bit of information. They are making it look real good. So let us go and look at titanium dioxide. Here is your titanium dioxide. And this is claiming it's a subject of a new controversy. Except it's a really old substance. It's one of the top 50 chemicals in the world. It's um, odorless, absorbent. Concern has arisen from studies that have pointed to this as a carcinogen and a photocatalyst, thus creating fear. Are the claims true? What does the research bear out? Potential adverse effects are listed on MSDS that has stated that it can cause lung fibrosis at 50 times the nuisance dust defined by the Department of Labor as 15 milligrams cubed, OSHA or 10 milligrams cubed. Uh, research on cancer from the International Agency, classified it to be a possible carcinogen. Alrighty, so we do have a little difference of opinion in some people's findings about this titanium dioxide release. Or not actually the release, but the dioxide itself. It is listed as a safe pigment with no known adverse effects when used in cosmetics. I think it's in sunscreen and stuff too. There is a study of effects of the titanium ions and particles on neutrophil function and morphology. Conclusion of it is relevant to consumers because the cosmetic industry is more and more using microionized pigments in your sunscreens and in your color cosmetics. Okay, well, that wasn't in the other two initial articles that I showed you was it. So, the Department of Homeland Security 
is so concerned with us about getting attacked chemically or biologically that they are going to, according to everything we've read together, initiate mock testing and gather data from it beginning in January and doing it again in June of next year. Whether it be two or whether it be four times they do it, we won't know until afterward. But we know that we've seen two articles that said June and January, and we saw another one that said January, February, June, and July. But whatever it be, they're going to do it unless it's canceled. So how do you feel about that? Do you, do you think this is just really a data gathering operation like they stated? Or how we would recover from an attack like that? Or do you think they're planning on something and they want to see the effectiveness of whatever they're planning? Or do they know someone else is planning something and they want to be able to evaluate and predict how severe this could possibly be on the people that will be affected by it? They may have conducted tests like these in the past that I'm not aware of and in locations that I'm not aware of. That I'm unsure of. And why did they pick the locations that they have to do this upcoming testing in? Uh, it's only been a few days. I haven't really had a chance to think about that. So I'm not sure why they why they picked this location. Uh, it could be the flow of the uh, the wind directions and such. Monitoring how far away this would be carried into where. But uh, you go messing around doing chemical and biological tests to gather data of the effects of the citizens in case they were attacked. And I think people need to be aware of, of what they say they're going to do and start thinking about what they're going to do and why they say they need to do it and the elements that they're going to use to do it with, which at, at the very least, one, is, has some difference of opinion about it being a potential carcinogen or not. And the BTK, the Dipel, well, I've read other things about that. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of tied in with uh, GMOs and everything, growing the GMO food. There's a, quite, a, quite a bit of it used on those areas where they grow the GMO food. So I wanted everybody to be aware what what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, what they're going to do it with, and I hope you take this seriously and, st and start thinking. If you live in the affected areas, you know, remember the dates that they're going to do it on, and pay attention that during those times. I hope everybody out there is doing well. Hope you continue to do well. May God bless and protect every one of you because he loves every one of you. And I'll be on the lookout for other things. You'll hear from me again. We'll see you later.